Hello, hello everybody, this is TipTopMTG here today with another Magic the Gathering video. In today's video, I am going to be talking about Zendikar Rising and the limited environment that they have created. So, yeah, this is a new kind of series that I'm doing where every single set that gets released, I'm going to talk about the limited environment, whether it be what colors are doing what, what I think of it, and, you know, just my overall thoughts on limited, as well as some advice and some connections that maybe you wouldn't have made without seeing this. So what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at the the signpost uncommons. And so if you guys don't know what these are, essentially every set generally has 10 uncommon multicolored cards. And generally, there's one in each color combination. So, you know, white, blue, blue, black, black, red, red, green, green, white, you know, all 10 color combinations. And they kind of give you a hint as to what you're supposed to do. And the idea is that if you're drafting and you see one of these multicolored cards and you notice that the, I don't know, this is just an example, the blue, black one is doing mill stuff then it kind of gives you this hint that, you know, hey, blue-black is going to want to mill. And so by looking at what the 10 signposts on commons are, you can really get a good theme as to what each color combination is trying to do. So why don't we start by looking at those? So starting off, we have Brushfire Elemental. So this is the Gruel or Red and Green uh, sign post uncommon. And so you'll notice here it's a 1-1 one, one with uh, Creature Elemental. And the important part here is Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, it gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. So... This is kind of giving the hint of, hey, maybe you want to dump a bunch of lands onto the battlefield and turn this guy into a creature very bigly, bi bigly? Very quickly. Uh, and so... I kind of categorize this as landfall boost. You're going to play, dump a bunch of lands, and that's going to boost up all your creatures. And, uh, you know, it's not just simply landfall. Now, green is generally going to be the best color for dumping lands onto the battlefield, and red has some of the best boost triggers for landfall. So overall, this seems like a very viable, you know, thing. I've drafted it a couple times, uh, and so far it seems like gruel seems to be a pretty good color combination. It's very quick with a lot of its cards having plus two, plus two for each land, and then having ways to dump them on the battlefield, but why don't we move into the next one? The next one is Cleric of Life's Bond, so this is white-black, and white-black has a theme of clerics and life gain, so uh, its main theme is clerics, but most of the clerics care about life gain in some way. Uh, so this guy, he says whenever another cleric enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life, and whenever you gain life for the first time each turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on him, so... You're seeing he cares about clerics by letting you gain life. He cares about life gain by letting you put counters on him. So he is going to do both, and he's going to be the really powerful card in your pool. So generally, if you're drafting a color combination, you pretty much want to always pick up their signpost uncommon because, well, it is generally really synergistic within the theme. Next, we have uh, red and white. So this is warriors, and more specifically, kind of like combat. Uh, that's generally what red and white g does is... We're going to boost up creatures, we're going to swing, and we're going to, you know, g just swing. Uh, and so this is a 3 cost 3-3 three, three human warrior, and it says other warriors you control get plus 1 plus 1. So yeah, again, you're going to care about warriors and all of that. And I think that I'm going to talk a little bit more about the cleric, warrior, wizard, and rogue themes, which are all themes. I'm going to talk about that here in a second. But um, yeah, I think that this is maybe okay if the environment is very quick. Uh, and it'll be really, you know, each person drafts differently, so just because I've practiced drafting, it doesn't mean that I'm going to fully understand what the meta of the limited is going to really look like. You really can't predict that until, you know, enough drafts have been done, but uh, overall, I think that if we end up with Gruul Landfall decks being, like, the best thing in the format... Um, this may be a good counter in terms of it being fast, although I don't know, uh, because generally if there is a really good theme, people are going to go and pick it, which means it's going to be harder to draft that theme. So having a good secondary fast, uh, theme can be good and this could be it, but we will have to see. Next we have Simic. Uh, so this one has a theme of kicking spells. So uh, yeah, you're going to gain life. You're going to have lots of spells with kicker. You're going to do things when you cast a kick spell, whether it's copy them or put counters on things or gain life. You're generally just going to want to play a bunch of cards that care about kicker and a bunch of cards with kicker. Uh, and that's what this old mage's familiar is really telling you. It's telling you, hey, whenever you cast a kick spell, you gain two life. And it's also giving you the mana you need because a lot of the kicked spells cost a lot. And so, you know, green and blue are pretty good at getting lands out on the battlefield, as we all know from standard. So it makes sense that, you know, they're going to give them the kicker ability, which is going to be very expensive to be able to pull off. 
Next we have Moss Pit Skeleton. So this is the Golgari or black and green signpost uncommon, and this one cares about plus one plus one counters. And I'm not saying Golgari's never cared about plus one plus one counters, but in recent times it seems more Selesnia and Simic y. Um, but it is nice to see, you know, so, uh, Golgari get their little share of plus one plus one counters. It means you can kind of combine them maybe and get some very interesting things going here. Generally, in terms of Moss Pit Skeleton itself, it's very meh, but it does very much show you that, hey, you're going to care about counters. And this one, maybe not as, as apparent from, you know, the signpost uncommon, but, you know, it does care about creatures... Being, having counters on them, and there's actually a lot of it in the set, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out, but if the metagame is dominated by these faster Landfall and Boros decks, I don't know how well Golgari's really gonna do, because it needs to build up its board a little bit to stabilize, and you may be dead by then, so it really depends on how the, you know, meta shakes up. Next, we have Marasa, Root Grazer, representing the Selesnia, or green and white, you know, signpost in common. And this one seems to be more generic landfall. It's going to be returning lands from your hand to the battlefield, returning basics, um, sorry, putting lands down, getting basics. This is going to be less, I'm going to try and boost my creatures by playing lands. It's more just, I'm playing lands, and that happens to do other effects. So I think that it is an important differentiator between, say, uh, Selesnia and um, Gruul. I think Selesnia will be much more conservative. It'll play cards that create like tokens on ET on land ETB or, you know, maybe not specifically boost. Uh, and, and so if you combine the two together, you may get something pretty interesting, but we will talk about that a little bit later. Next, we have Ravager's Mace, representing the Rakdos, or black and red, um, you know, theme. And here we have artifacts as a theme. Now, you know, Boros, I would have said, if you would have asked me before, what is Boros going to do in the set, I would have said, um, you know, it's probably going to be equipment because of Nahiri. Nahiri cares about equipment, Nahiri's in Boros. But here we're having equipment being cared about in Rakdos. And if you look, it does make a little bit of sense. Um, I would not be surprised, though, if people do try and use, you know, Boros equipment because a decent amount of equipment is colorless. I think that it is very easy to be able to do. Um, I don't know how well it's going to work. You know, the, all the equipment auto attaches, but then it has a really expensive equip cost, which for longer grindier games like Limited, that may work fine, but I don't know if there is enough equipment in the set to make this a reliable thing to draft. Next, we have uh, score, Soaring Thought Thief, which is going to represent Demir or the blue black, um, you know color combination. So this is rogues, and more specifically, rogues care about your opponent having eight or more cards milled. Maybe not milling them entirely, but getting to eight cards. It's kind of like a threshold, um, but for your opponent. Uh, and so in terms of this card, I think it's pretty awesome. It's very interesting to see how some of the signposts and commons will actually lead their color combination, but some of them are just kind of meh. I think that this one is pretty good. It lets you get to that eight or more cards in your graveyard. It is a boost for all your rogues. It's going to care about eight or more cards in your graveyard. Uh, it's flashy. It's, you know, unexpected. It can trigger your the milling at instant speed. Very good card, but that's not the point. Do I think that rogues are going to do well? I think that it'll be interesting. Blue and black are very controlling colors, and so if the amount of control in the common slot and uncommon is high enough, which uh, it doesn't seem super high, but it also doesn't seem that low. Uh, this may be able to do some interesting things, but again, if the game is dominated by fast decks, I don't know how well these mid-rangey kind of strategies of I'm going to try to get you to eight cards to gain a little bit of extra bonuses off of my cards and then also have some rogue tribal in there. So it'll be interesting to see, but I don't think it's going to work out that well if the meta is so fast, similar to how it was in previous Zendikars. Next, we have Spoils of Adventure representing Azorius or the white and blue, you know, color combination. And this is the party, you know, colors. And so I think that this is probably one of the worst colors you can draft. And I know, you know, party, I think, will be the most interesting in limited if you can draft it. But I think saying I'm going to draft blue-white is very dangerous. How I see someone drafting party going is, hey, I'm drafting wizards. Oops, don't have enough wizards. Here's some, like, clerics. Oh, here's some rogues. And then 
then they're like, oh, well, you know, I already have two tribes. Let's just go for all four and do party. Uh, and, you know, blue white does make a lot of sense for party. And we'll talk about that in a little bit here when I break down what themes kind of work well together. I have two different examples. Uh, and so we'll talk about that here in a second. But generally, I think that say, starting off by saying I'm going to be at blue white parties, I think, or is very. Uh, not great because I think that party is going to be one of those mechanics where it's like, uh, you know, I guess I'll end up in party because you can end up in blue, white party. You could end up in red, you know, re red, black party. So we'll have to see. Uh, in terms of, I, I don't think, by the way, party is going to be the most powerful deck. I think it's something that people are going to end up being in by, you know, picking a tribe, like I said, and then just being like, oops, there's not enough support for this. Let's just do party. So then we have, uh, sorry, red and blue. It's a, you know, is it? It's Umara Mystic, but it cares about wizards, instants, and sorceries, which, uh, you know, clerics cared about life gain, rogues cared about milling, warriors cared about quick damage. They care about instants and sorceries. Uh, I think this could be pretty interesting in terms of like Umara Mystic, it's pretty good, but uh, depending on a lot of different factors, again, of the metagame, It'll be hard to tell, but I think out of the tribes, I think it'll be better than something like um, clerics and things like that. So I think it'll be one of the better of the four tribal, one of the, you know, good creature types of the four tribals. But um, in terms of the amount of support, you know, instants and sorceries are kind of key to the game. So there's a lot of those. So I, I, I actually don't think it's that terrible, and I did draft it once, and it was pretty fun to play. Obviously, draft is so different every time you play it in terms of just what you get, so we'll have to see. And I keep saying we'll have to see, but that's really the truth. It's like I can simulate as many drafts and play as many games with my drafted decks against my friends as I want, but that doesn't mean that I can just tell you, hey, these are the most powerful decks, because every time you draft, it's going to be different. I may have gotten a really powerful Wizards deck, in my, but, you know, Wizards may not be that powerful, so... Um, we will, again, just have to look and kind of make our best predictions now. Now, I want to talk a little bit about what themes work well together. For instance, say you wanted to draft three color, um, a, or four color even, which is pretty risky, although with the amount of land, you know, double-sided cards, maybe you're able to do it. What work well? So here are the four tribes. We have warriors, clerics, wizards, and rogues, and you'll notice something very interesting. You can make two different color combinations out of these. So for instance, half the wizards are blue, and half the rogues are blue. So you could have blue be for party on those two sides, and then you could have white white be the clerics and the warriors. So then you have white warriors with blue wizards. You could also, for instance, do black rogues with a red, uh, black rogues and clerics with red wizards and warriors. So you can break these down into two color combinations. Of course, you could also do, you know, red, black, and, you know, blue if you wanted to do more rogue wizard centric with a little bit of extra party in there as well. But what's interesting here is obviously looking at Spoils of Adventure. You're taking blue from the right, white from the left. Um, and of course, black and red, if you notice the equipment that is the signpost uncommon, it does have a little bit of party in its text as well, meaning that they expect, I think, blue and white along with black and red to be the most popular, you know, choices, which I, I think makes a lot of sense, but I think that most party decks that are going to be successful are going to end up in three colors with a lot of modal dual-faced cards to make sure that they can get their colors. And then I just want to talk about the two landfall ones. I think that if you combine these together, you can get some pretty awesome things going on. Obviously, landfall with more landfall is going to be good, but just keep that in mind that these are only one color off of each other. So, wow, you get this red, green, white deck that's going to play lands, return lands to your hand, or then be able to replay them, boost all your creatures. I think that maybe a gruel deck may be a little bit more consistent and faster, but I think that the deck together will be technically more powerful. And obviously, again, uh, we can only predict at this point, but I think that Landfall is going to be one of the major drafting themes that people are going to want. Now, Obviously, I can be wrong about all this, and I'm going to talk a little bit about drafting. Uh, the few times I did it, it was really fun. Honestly, even sets like Core Set 2021, which were not my favorite to draft, I still have a blast drafting, and it's kind of hard, I feel like, for them to really mess up a draft unless there's some, you know... I mean, like, even, like, the mythics in this set are pretty good, but none of them really, at least that I was able to run into, really felt like, oh, they, you know, this just wins them the game and I have no way of dealing with it. It'd be like all the mythics have a way to deal with them, and it's just 
a lot of fun, and there's a lot of intricate things in the common slot, which also adds some fun to it. So yeah, if you guys have had a chance to play the limited environment already, let me know what you think about it. If you haven't, let me know what you are predicting about it, and what color combinations you guys think are going to be the most powerful in the kind of limited format. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to see more awesome content like this, and I will see you guys in the next one.